Yeah, law of business transactions and uh, my topic is banking and non-performing effects. As uh, we have started uh, with the morning session, a different uh, uh, topic we have chosen and uh, this topic is something uh, relevant and but uh, especially it's a different topic. Uh, as we have started uh, go back when the English has started ruling over India, and uh, they have uh, started the banking system uh, into the India system. And uh, uh, in that, Lord West Wellesley has uh, uh, introduced the presidency bank into the banking system against the people who can uh, And uh, further, it has started with the State Bank of India and others. And uh, finally, the uh, BIF and Banking Regulating Act and uh, um, uh, uh, Central Bank RBI has initiated. And uh, in that, I have focused the banking and the NPA, how it is being impacting to the banking system as well as the financial system. Uh, here, the financial sector has been one of the key drivers in India, a course to achieve success in rapidly developing in economy. While the banking industry in India is progressively complying with the international prudential norms and accounting practices, there are certain areas in which the banking and financial sector do not have a level playing field as compared to other participants in the financial market in the world. The banking industry in any company in country plays an important role and growth also. The developed and the state in mobilization of money from the people who are abundant to those who are in need of money as capitalization, the opportunity and thereby contribute the banking industry is able to perform this function in an efficient and effective manner. It drives the country growth in parallel. Further, the effect of the Nursingman Committee in 1991 the recommendation which led to the provision for the establishment of the DRT debt recovery figureness. By notification of the issue by the central government for exercising jurisdiction, power, authority conferred on the sense tribunal under the RDBVFIA. After the nationalization of the bank in 1969, India was looking for the strong banking system and uh, the, this uh, RDBVFI Act. It has been introduced in 1993 and further the Supreme Court in the case of Union uh, of India versus Delhi High Court Bar Association uh, in 2002 has also provided the mechanism for recovery of loan must be there by the court by forming the special court which is the DRT. The, because of the NPA was increasing and recovery of loan was very difficult only we going to the civil court and asking the remedial action. But for that, uh, which was a very lengthy process, now uh, the uh, new recommendation uh, has emerged as a Surpassy Act 2002 when the, the banks have been empowered that they can, they can recover the loan uh, directly without the intervention of the court uh, from the loan. Uh, this main objective of the present research paper is to analyze the, how the performance of the public se sector with the help of the past five years, near about the 15 to 19. Uh, I have focused the first uh, DRT was established in 1994. The committee was consulted by the government of India on the suggestion, enactment of the new legislation. And uh, now, the NP of the public sector banks was uh, in uh, 2017 7,34,000 crore rupees and in this uh, in 19, 2019 the 8,95,601 8, crore rupees uh, was NP. Uh, it was a very huge amount and the uh, focus was the uh, earlier the non-performing assets and the other uh, classification. Earlier non-performing assets was 
that including the lease assessed becomes a non-performing when it ceases to generate income for the bank. This NPA was defined as credit facility in respect of which interest installment of the principal has remained past due for the specific period of time. Now, in 1993, there was a specific period of four quarters. In 1994, three quarters, and 95 onwards, only two quarters were made. The amount due, any credit facility is treated past due, and due to the improvement in the payment of settlement system, recovery, climate, upgradation, technology, and banking system, it was decided to dispense with the past due concept with the effect of 31st March 2001. There are some norms uh, laid for the non PA. First is interest on installment or the principal remains overdue for a period of more than 180 days. Second, the account remains out of order for a period of more than 180 days in respect of overdraft or cash credit. Then, third, the bill remains overdue for a period of more than 180 days in the case of bill purchase or discounted. Then fourth, interest and or installment of the principal remains overdue for the two harvest season, but for a period of not exceeding two and a half years in the case of an advance granted by the for the agricultural purposes. Any amount to be received remains overdue for a period of more than 180 days in respect of other accounts. But here the some changes are. With a view of moving toward the international scenario, the, uh, the something has been changed to the 90 days. This is as interest installment for the principal remains overdue for a period of 90 days or more than in respect of the term loan. Second, the account remains out of order for a period of more than 90 days in respect of the overdraft or cash credit. Third, the bill remains overdue for a period of more than 90 days in the case of bill purchase or discounting. Fourth, the interest and or installment of principal remains overdue for two harvest season, but for a period not exceeding two and a half years in the case of advance granted for the excess purpose. Fifth, any amount to be received remain overdue for a period of more than 90 days in respect of the other account. Then uh, the asset classification is uh, also defined standard, doubtful, then substandard, and loss. Here should be uh, like this standard, substandard, doubtful, and loss. Okay, loss and, uh, and the further uh, one is uh, written off. Then standard is which does not create any problem. Substandard, as it has been enumerated by the Reserve Bank of India. This was with effect from the 2005 substandard asset would be one which has retained an NPA for a period of not less than or equal to 12 months. Second, doubtful asset. The guidance of the Reserve Bank of India with effect from 31st March 2005, an asset would be classified as doubtful if it has remained in substandard category for a period of then loss asset. Loss asset is one where loss has been identified by the bank or the internal or external auditor or the RBI inspection, but the amount has not been written off only. In other words, we can say that the, an asset is considered uncollectible and of such little overdue. Here are some literature review uh, I have gone through. The B. Selvarajan and Dr. G. Vedwalan. A study of management of the non PA in priority sector reference to the Indian bank and public sector banks attempted to analyze the performance of the public sector bank, lending the emphasis that the public sector banks were not comfortable in regard to NPA management and suggested to focus on the timely action of the bank as to be defaulted borrowers. Second, Monica and Sonia, uh, Sonia in 2014, empirical study on the NPA of the bank tried to study uh, the comparison of total advances 
net profit, gross NPA, and net NPA of the PNB, and concluded that the gross NPA and net NPA of the PNB were increasing year and year. And also, positive relation was found between the NPA and profit view. Then, the Mayur and Ankita, a study on non performing asset management with reference to the public sector bank, private sector bank, and foreign banks in India, analyzed the NPA related ratio of the public sector, private sector, and foreign banks in India for 2019, 9, and 30. Was found out that the ratio of GNPA, gross non-performing asset, to gross advantage was reflected to downward trend for the both private sector as well as the foreign sector also. Then, Payam and Prati has also analyzed the non-performing asset in the public sector banks of India attempted to analyze the GNPA and NNPA of the public sector bank and also tried to find the impact of GNPA on NPA, right? Then here are the causes, how the NPA is happening, for which the loan is being sanctioned also turns out to be part of NPA. So fourth is diversion of loan funded by the borrowers for the purpose or the project other than one of which loan was approved also lead to the NPA at some point of time. And the absence of regular follow up. These are the causes where the NPA increases. They are the causes of the NPA, right? Here are the some data I have given uh, since 2014, 15, 16, 17. Uh, the gross NPA in 2015, that's uh, 2,627 crore uh, in the well, this is the public sector bank. Then 2017, 6,410. This is the huge NPA in the public sector banks. Uh, this private sector, and just I have related between the public as well as the private also. Uh, in 2017, uh, the private sector has the less NPA into the banking sector. That is the 738 crore in the private sector bank. And in 2016, that is 483 crore. In 2015, 315 crore gross NPA was. Then here, some of the guidelines because the uh, in the uh, uh, this uh, ICICI Bank versus Santi Devi uh, and many other cases, the um, bank was using the boon for recovery of loan. Then after that, uh, the RBI has given the guidelines how to reduce, how do we have, how to recover the line, uh, this uh, NPA. Uh, the guideline issued by the, R the RBI, first is, you would be contacted ordinary manner at the place of your choice and in the absence of any specific place at the place of your residence. If unavailable at your residence at the place your business or occupation continues. Then second is identity and authority to represent would be made known to you at the first time. Second, your privacy would be respected. Then third, interaction with you would be in civil manner. Then further, normally our representative will contact you between seven a.m. to 7 p.m. in between only. Your request to avoid calls at a particular time or the particular place would be honored as far as possible. Then time and number of calls and connect content of conversation would be documented. All assistance would be given to resolve the dispute or the difference regarding the dues in the manually acceptable and in orderly manner. Then, during the visit of your place for dues collection, decency and decorum would be maintained. This was a clear instruction. Then, inappropriate occasion, such bewilderment in the family or such other calamitous occasion would be avoided for making the calls or visit to collect, but it is not happening properly, sir. Then, uh, many of the cases are mentioned here. The Chandrasan of Baddu state of UP, uh, in that uh, honorable court has also said that 
Any other means of recovery by engagement of private agency by bank is wholly uncalled for illegal and unwarranted decides being one militating against the rule of law which is so of the constitution. Then uh, Justice uh, K.G. Balakrishnan and Justice G.K. Jain has also mentioned uh, that we are governed by the rule of law in the country. How can we someone take the position by force? Means they were using the force. Then you cannot employ the gundas. The bench remarks while the dealing with the plea by the bank challenging the registration of the criminal case against its official for allegedly using the criminal force against the loanee. Then uh, further. Here again, the ICIC Bank versus Shanti Devi Sharma, it has case in that the Supreme Court has emphasized that the using of criminal force of recovery of loan must be looked into the corner of humanity and deliver the judgment by the quoting, we deem it appropriate to remind the banks and other financial institutions that will live in civilized countries and are governed by the rule of law. Sir, here two and three suggestions I am giving because uh, the time is less. Uh, many things we have seen, sir, like uh, Mehan Chaukasi case and uh, your Malaya case and others, because many questions uh, will arise that the, yes, there is a provision that the banking sector is empowered with the Surfacy Act and uh, others also that they can uh, uh, recover the loan directly. But here, my suggestion is because the, uh, uh, as the research says, there is a many involvement into either the uh, legal or the technical, uh, the authority, those who are involved or the making the false document, some suggestion. This line well, must employ adopted scientific approach for the operation before the loan is distributed and monitored it closely in real time. This must provide need-based microcredit for needy entrepreneur with a good proposal and implement a system for selecting a good borrower. Then it must build a credit information bureau to restrict the errant borrower from the switching banks. Then banks should always be followed basic lending norms and take quick credit decision. It must break up recovery to branch level network. It must set up a separate NPSL at each branch level. Take every NPA case as a separate issue and analyze the need for the for future finding from an economic point. Opt for out of court settlement. Many of the cases we have seen that the, they, they go for the out of court settlement. Then Periodically, a list of defaulters may be published to the enable the bank to take necessary action against the defaulters. Amend the relevant laws like CPG, Limitation Act, Stamp Act, Evidence Act to ensure that the bank default case are dealt with an altogether different basis with a limited number of adjournments. Then the government should see, see to that the strong bank should not be merged with the weak bank as it may attract to the performance of the strong banking system. Here some another uh, recommendations are effective and regular follow-up of the end use of the fund sanction is required to ascertain any embezzlement or diversion of the funds. Then combining traditional wisdom of modern statistical tools value at its analysis here it is to be implemented. Then healthy bankers borrower relations should also be developed. Then assisting the borrowers in developing his entrepreneurial skills will not only establish a good relation between the borrowers but also help the bankers to keep the track on their funds. Here some tax incentives like the capital gain tax exemptions carry forward the losses set off. Some of the other income qualified 
borrowers should be granted as ensure their active participation by the way of investing. The so far the public sector banks has done well as for the lending to the private sector concern. However, it is not enough to make the lending to its sector mandatory. Then coming to that, another way to manage the NPA by the bank is the compromise settlement scheme or one-time settlement scheme should also be there. Then here the criminal uh, yes uh, the criminal force using by the physical position should be avoided because and other things are there that the many uh, banking authorities are involved uh, because taking the bribe and uh, uh, forwarding the, to, to the document because many uh, times it has been seen that the, when the banks has gone to recover the loan then the address is missing, the person is missing, the contact number is missing, then how? Once the loan is processed, there is a mechanism, there is a, a legal process, there, there is a technical process, there is a, another witness, then everything is there, the, how the, the, the person has gone away. It seems that the, there is the involvement of the banking authority. Now I will conclude my uh, the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.